Hello there and welcome back to my channel. Thank you for joining me today in this short lesson. We are going to look at one pip cube difference. Now sometimes one pip, just one pip is the difference between a take and between a pass or even between a double and a no double. Now no one ever said that this game was easy and the cube is a good demonstration of that. Now I'm gonna show you some comparative positions and they are all cubes from money games where white is on roll and the analysis is on plus plus settings on XG. Now should you wish you can adjust these positions on XG for match play and even do further rollouts to see whether decisions hold up. I have also added some short brief comments on the positions, but of course, much more can be said about these positions and it is a good area for study, manipulating positions on XG and really thinking about the cube action and doing that certainly will improve your understanding over the board and perhaps lead to fewer errors and blunders when deciding on a cube action when you play. So let's start looking at these positions. Now here we have a double take on the left and a double pass on the right. These are both blitz positions, but on the right it swings to a pass for green because white's blitz potential has increased. Now as white we have extra hitting numbers with fives and double three plays much better. Even rolls which do work well on the left such as 6-5 play better on the right hand side where 6-5 now makes a three point on green's head. So on the right we have more hitting numbers but we also have better ways to use a rolls that work on the left. So this becomes a pass and a blunder to take for green on the right hand side position. Now here we have a no double on the left and a double take on the right. And there we can see the difference on the right that white has cleaned up the two blots in the outfield. So now in the right hand position, white can use their full roll to build in a board points or even the bar point using those three builders efficiently to make new points so that becomes a small double on the right hand side so there we can see on the left that were white to roll something like 2-4 enabling him to make the four point he would still then have the problem of those two blots in the outfield to clean up whereas on the right a 4-2 would obviously play much better now here on the left we have a no double and on the right we have a double pass and again this is due to the power of more numbers. So white has a six and a one to make the five point prime and also threes now make the four point. So here is when dice distribution is really useful on XG to see which rolls work well and which rolls work badly. And I have actually done a video on my channel on the dice distribution feature on XG. So go and have a look at that after and you will see why it becomes a double pass on the right hand side due to the power of more rolls. Now here on the left we have a double take and on the right we have a double pass. Again, like before we have more rolls at work and now on the right we have threes and sixes that now become hitting numbers. So it becomes much too threatening of a position. So with threes and sixes, you effectively have another 20 hitting numbers. Again, you can look at these positions in more depth and actually go through and write down all the ways you can hit on the right and all the ways you can hit on the left and how many rolls make the prime and so forth. Here, it's a pass on the right, simply too many hitting numbers. It's too threatening a position for green to take. Here on the left, we have a double take and on the right, we have a double pass. And you can see the adjustment made there. 
that White has an odd amount of checkers in the outfield, whereas on the right he has an even amount of checkers, and that makes a big difference on shot levers. So on the right hand side, there is far less risk for White. He has many roles such as 6'6, 6'5, 6'4, 6'3, and so on, play much better for White. On the left hand side, if White were to roll a double six or a six five, he would give Green a chance to hit him. And of course, Green has a very strong board, the strongest board possible with six points made. So we certainly don't want to be giving Green any chance to hit us and then cube us out, of course. On the right with the even checkers, that's less likely to happen and therefore it becomes a big pass for Green. Now here on the left, we have a no double. On the right, we have a double take. And the reason it becomes a double for white on the right hand side is because it's more volatile as a position because green has, has an anchored up in white's home board. So now we have blitz potential to attack uh, those blots in our home board. So we can see there the gammon difference goes from 10% on the left to 20% on the right because of all the hitting numbers. So many rolls there um, will attack those two blots. And as a rough sum, we can look at the three builders and square that to see that we have nine numbers there to attack. But of course, we actually have more than that because green has two blots in our home board as opposed to one. So we are in a threatening position and it's a good time to double on the right hand side. On the left, it's an early game position and green has anchored up. So doubling there on the left would simply be too early. We do not have enough threats and the position and race, again, there's not enough going in our favor there to bring the double in. Now here we have a double take and a double pass. And here we can see the difference that on the right hand side, White has made the five point in our opponent's board, also known as a golden anchor. And a rule of thumb is often when you have both five points made, it is a double. And here it is also a pass for green because not only does White have the golden anchor, he no longer has ones um, that are duplicated and he has the rack formation, a 654. So simply too much of a structural advantage and that becomes a pass for green. On the left, it becomes a big take. So one pip, big difference. And certainly having the best anchor in your home board is very strong and rules out counterplay of being blitzed or being primed. So the value of that anchor is really strong in eliminating some of your opponent's game plans. And here we have a double take and on the right a double pass. And here we have moved White's checker from the 23 point to the 22 point on the right hand side. And that is really crucial because now White can see daylight and he has a six to escape the lone back checker. So Green can no longer take the cube. On the left hand side, White would need to use his full roll to escape, meaning he wouldn't be able to cover the blot in his home board. Whereas on the right, he could roll 6-3 or 6-5, for instance, and escape the check and make the rack formation. So having the six only using one die rather than both dice to escape is really key to see the difference between a take and pass decision. And here you see something similar to the last position where we have moved Green's checker back one point in our home board and it becomes a pass. Now we can see that on the right hand side, green would need a 6-1 to escape, which is only two rolls in 36, whereas on the left, any six escapes. So that is 11 rolls. And again, that is a big difference. So having a six 
to see daylight is really crucial in thinking about the decision. Here, even though that green has a five point board, a stronger home board than white, it doesn't matter if green is trapped and is hoping to get a lucky roll to jump white's prime. And here we have a double take and a double pass. Now this is more of an end game position and here we can see on the right it becomes a pass for Green because his distribution has worsened somewhat and he no longer has a spare on his ace point which will slow down his bear off. In contrast White's bear off structure is more efficient with spares on the 4 and 5 point and fewer crossovers. So there with the worst distribution for Green it is swung to a pass. So there we are, 10 comparative positions. And like I said at the start, by all means, take these positions, put them into XG, play around with them, manipulate checkers, adjust the match score, do some rollouts. You can learn a lot from tinkering around with cube action. And it really does help you improve your game. You certainly don't want to be in a tournament setting and be scratching your head as to whether you should take or pass try to develop and extend your knowledge and do check out my other videos on cubing on checker play on various other game strategy new videos every wednesday thank you so much for watching see you then happy rolling goodbye